Russia has lost 1,710 soldiers killed and wounded, 64 armored combat vehicles and an air defense system over the past day. General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported this. The Ukrainian military destroyed 24 tanks. During the past day, 197 combat encounters between Ukrainian forces and Russian occupying troops were recorded along the front lines. Ukrainian military personnel steadfastly repelled attacks in various directions, according to the press service of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. The enemy actively utilized various weapons, launching three missile strikes, firing six rockets, conducting 78 airstrikes, and dropping 135 guided aerial bombs. At the same time, the occupiers carried out over 4,000 artillery shellings, including 136 from multiple launch rocket systems, and used 1,424 kamikaze drones. The most intense airstrikes targeted the Kharkiv, Donetsk, and Zaporizhia directions. Particularly in areas around settlements such as Kharkiv, Vovchansk, Siversk, Toritsk, Selidov, and Mala Takmachka. In the Kharkiv direction, four enemy attacks in the Vovchansk area ended in failure. In the Kupiansk direction, the occupiers suffered defeat in 12 encounters, while in the Lyman direction, Ukrainian forces halted 20 enemy attacks. Defenders continue to hold their positions on other sections of the front, including the Kramatorsk, Pokrovsk, and Kurakov directions. The enemy repeatedly attempted to breach Ukrainian defensive lines, but all efforts were repelled. Specifically, in the Pokrovsk direction, Ukrainian defenders stopped 46 attacks, and in the Kurakov direction, they thwarted 59 breakthrough attempts. The situation in the Volyn and Polisha directions remained stable, with no signs of enemy offensive preparations. Meanwhile, in the Kursk direction, Russian forces continue to carry out airstrikes. Russian invaders continue their attempts to occupy Chasivyar in the Donetsk region. Build analyst Julian Ropk writes about this. The observer believes that the Russians still managed to break through the city's defenses. Julian Ropk notes that the Russians were unable to cross the Seversky Donetsk Donbass Canal in the east for several months, but on Friday the Chechen vanguard crossed it and advanced 2.5 kilometers to the west along the southern edge of Chasivyar. After five months of fierce fighting, the Russian army broke through the Ukrainian front south of Chasev Yar and planted its flag on an industrial building 2.5 kilometers across the canal. Russian soldiers can be seen climbing the building and preparing a bridgehead there, Ropk wrote. The analyst explained that most likely, the Russian invading forces will not advance further west, but instead will turn north and attack the center of Chasev Yar. On October 20th, Russian invaders occupied the village of Zelenoy Toroy in the Pokrovsky district of the Donetsk region. This is stated in a report by the monitoring project Deep State. Analysts also confirm that Russian troops have advanced in Vishnevo, Izium district, Kharkiv region, Gornyak in Donetsk region, Olgovka in Kursk region and Lubomovka in Kursk region. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announced the allocation of a $400 million military aid package to Ukraine on Monday during a visit to Kiev. The package will provide your forces with additional munitions, armored vehicles, and anti-tank weapons, Austin said at a meeting alongside Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The visit comes hours after a Russian drone attack on the Ukrainian capital and as Zelensky pushes Western partners to keep providing military support for the war. 
Ukraine is having difficulty holding back a ferocious Russian campaign along the Eastern Front that is gradually compelling Kiev's forces to give up a series of towns, villages, and hamlets. Zelensky is urging Western allies to support his so-called victory plan to end the almost three-year war, which is Europe's biggest since World War II and has cost tens of thousands of lives on both sides, including many civilians. His strategy includes a formal invitation for Ukraine to join NATO and permission to use Western long-range missiles to strike military targets in Russia, steps that Kiev's allies have previously balked at supporting. The Western response has been lukewarm, and Austin was expected to discuss the plan with Ukrainian officials in Kiev. According to our uh, last dialogue, I think very positive dialogue with the President Biden by phone, we discussed a lot of things and uh, by the way, thanks for the last package supporting our uh, soldiers and uh, and we discussed a lot of important things about victory plan about preparing for winter so some details which will be i think uh, sorry out of camp. we've moved heaven and earth to help ukraine and that inspiring coalition of more than 50 allies and partners continues to stand united to provide your country with the ass security assistance that ukraine needs to prevail under president biden's leadership the United States remains committed to keeping up this support. And so I'm pleased to announce today the commitment of a $400 million presidential drawdown package to provide your forces with additional munitions, armored vehicles, and anti-tank weapons.